Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Eric Martin? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Living man, I want to make it clear. Um, living man, Eric Martin. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much clear that you're a living man at this point, Tart. I mean, uh, despite what uh, you sovereign citizens think, lawyers do represent the living, you douchebag dumbasses. A uh, defendant, corporate entity. Court will call case 23S00425, people state of Michigan, is Eric Martin. Allegations are that on July 11, 2023, Ypsilanti Township, Washington County, state of Michigan, on I-94 at or near Michigan Avenue, you did operate a motor vehicle at a time your driver's license was suspended or revoked. A misdemeanor carrying a maximum penalty of convicted of up to 93 days in jail, a $500 fine, plus court costs, or both. Do you understand that? Oh, I do not uh, understand uh in the sense that I do not stand under the charges. Dude, you do know that the word understand is a simile for comprehend. It doesn't mean that you stand under somebody or whatever the hell you think it means. It is a word used for comprehend. Now, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth, or should I speak slower? Count two alleges that on the same date, time, location, you did operate a motor vehicle at a time you did not have in full force in effect. Insurance is required by state law. Again, a misdemeanor carrying a max penalty of convicted of up to one year in jail, a $500 fine, plus court costs, or both. And the third count alleges that on the same date, time, location, you did operate an unregistered motor vehicle. A misdemeanor carrying a maximum penalty convicted of up to 90 days in jail, a $500 fine, plus court costs, or both. These are misdemeanor charges. You have certain basic rights. You have the right to remain silent. You say on the record, Canada would be using it to do a trial. You have the right to trial by jury, the right to the assistance of an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will represent you at public expense. Should there be a trial in this matter, you'd have the following trial rights. You may call witnesses to speak on your behalf. You have the right to see, hear, and question any witness against you. You may act as a witness for yourself, or should you choose not to testify, the prosecutor may not comment on your refusal to testify. You are presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Court Senator, not guilty, please, as all counts. The public defender will address bond in these matters. Assistant Public Defender, let me stop appearing with and on behalf of uh, Mr. Martin, requesting a PR bond uh, this morning, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. I object, I object to uh, any representation by um, any attorney as okay. I invoke my right to uh, to a Republican form of government and Republican laws under Article 4, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution. Um, Article 4, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution has nothing to do with... Uh, well, your rights in a trial. I think you want uh, the Sixth Amendment on this one, dude. Uh, so, which tells me that uh, you're not exactly entirely familiar with the Constitution to begin with. You should really work on that as a citizen of the United States, if you think you're actually a citizen instead of a sovereign citizen. But let's continue on. Meaning I... <clears throat> My, I, I just, my phone just kicked on to where I can hear. Hey, hang on. Hang on, Mr. May. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Of course, no, the objection of public defenders excuse from proceed, proceeding further. And that's just, yeah, not make it clear, not just as to them, nothing with them 
you know, um, just them specifically, you know what I'm saying? Any and all attorneys because... Uh, I think you meant specifically right there. I mean, it, it's a simple word to, uh, well, forget about. I mean, in, especially if you are smooth brain soft hard. I do not give up my right to be sovereign as one of the people, as the U.S. Supreme Court said I have as one of the people. Uh, you know, the right to Republican form of government and to be sovereign. So that's that's why I say that. Thank you. Yep. All right, uh, Mr. Martin, we will set a pretrial hearing September the 14th at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Uh, oh, did you uh, oh, is this so fast? Let me write September 14th is uh, September 14th. What time? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And that's uh, what's the title of that proceeding? That'll be a pretrial hearing. All right. Prosecutor be present for that hearing. Uh, we've uh, we've have uh, any future filings you may make with the court. Make sure you copy the prosecutor on. We have forwarded these for you as a courtesy. But if you make any future filings with the court, uh, including the ones you've already filed here, or well, in addition to the ones you've already filed, make sure you send a copy to the prosecuting attorney's office. Their address will be on the notice. We'll send you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have another objection here. Um, I also object to the a challenge of jurisdiction uh, in this case against me. As a living man. Yeah, yeah, we all know the sovereign citizen argument that a living man cannot be prosecuted, only a dead corporation in by name or whatever. I mean, it's such a stupid argument to begin with, and it never works when it comes right down to it. Um you can make that you can make that motion in writing. Uh again, any motions made in writing be filed with the court and and served on the prosecuting attorney's office. Okay. Okay. All right. Did you receive a text message to remind you about today's court date? Did I receive a text message for what? To remind you of today's court date. Of today's court date? Yes, I did. Okay. Just want to make sure you're receiving those so you're getting that notice. We'll mail them to your uh, your address on record here too as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you were all, you're all set for today, Mr. Martin. Again, uh, September 14th, 9 a.m. Fail, failure to appear for a court date could result in a bench warrant uh, for the individual's arrest. you understand that? Well, I don't understand in the sense I do not stand under it, and I uh, object to that because it violate my right against uh, sovereignty and Article 4, Section 4, public form of government. And, All right, your uh, objection is noted. Your objection is noted as well as your massive ignorance of what the Constitution is. So let's carry on with the rest of this hearing, shall we? And many is this many other reasons to why I object to because, you know, it's there's no jurisdiction here um, under many other reasons. Um, well, yeah. as, as, as courts operate, you will need to file any objections in writing. I've instructed you on how to do that. So if you want to, if you want to, you know, uh, submit those objections, just write it up and make sure you send a copy to the court and to the prosecuting attorney's office so they're prepared to address that at the next court date. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Well, one objection I kind of have with the prosecutor in the sense of, uh, I mean, I will if I must under threatened arrest. Oh, that's another thing I was going to mention. Now, I'm only appearing, I'm appearing here by special appearance, not a general appearance. And this is through threatened arrest of, you know, the rest and all that, the normal procedure that courts follow. So I just want to make that clear. I, you know, I'm not really consenting to, um, you know, appearing here today. I'm not consenting you know, for future references to be held under the jurisdiction of the court. And all that, and that's uh, one of the legal the legal authorities I use for this is the, the Michigan Constitution and the U.S. Constitution under the Thirteenth Amendment right against slavery, and to not be subject to involuntary servitude. Wow, you really have no idea what slavery or indentured servitude is, right? I mean, this is not about. Either one of those concepts right there. This is about your traffic violations. It is about the laws surrounding those, not slavery or indentured servitude or anything like that. And right now, you're just comparing apples to oranges, a.k.a. the false equivalence fallacy. So just straighten up and fly right and actually learn these things. That's one of the legal authorities I, I rely on to be subject to any arrest for the bench, like you mentioned, or anything else that's, you know, against my will. And um, I just want to mention that. You've, you've made your record on that point. 
Okay. Um, but, oh, no. What does it say about the copies of the prosecutor? No. I will find must under threat and arrest, you know. But see, that costs money. And I shouldn't have to spend no money for my asses to the court, such as by making copies. That just costs more money for me to you know, make the copies. Um, so in that sense, I'm going to ask that if that, that, that the court clerk make a copy and send it to them so I don't have to spend money to make the copies, which I think violate, like, it violates my right to ask to the courts. And as the U.S. Supreme Court said, it was a Murdoch versus Pennsylvania. I think that was one of the cases I cite dealing with my other arguments. Um, you know, we don't have to spend money for the exercise of a right. Uh, no, that's not exactly what Murdoch, Pennsylvania was all about, dude. I mean, if you can't even get the Constitution right, uh, how are you expected to get any of the other case laws right? I mean, good freaking grief, you're not exactly doing so well right now. Um, well, you do. You would have to. Can I address that for you, Miss Martin? If I may, if, if I may, I'll address that for you. Okay. Me making. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, you, if, if there's a finding of indigency and you need to fill out a, a, a form indicating that you're indigent, so you can find that uh, form on our website. If you file that form, and there's a finding of indigency, 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 indigency that's easy enough for me to say. Uh, then we consider that at that point in time. Okay. Well, I'm saying in addition, I just, you know, I know the normal indigencies normally thing, but I'm saying regardless of the aspect, just simply because it's a right of ask to the courts, it's not just limited to indigency. It's just, it's just period. I shouldn't, you know, have to, don't have to pay money for the exercise of right period, regardless whether I'm indigent or not, you know. I hear you, but that, that, that's a process that we have under the court rules. Right. Currently. If you want to challenge the court rules as they are there's a process for that but we have we have to operate with what we have to operate with right now okay well the court rules is uh like i said just once again and uh, the final thing to say about it is under murdoch versus pennsylvania u.s supreme court and i got the volume and page and recited to already one of the papers uh you know in general just uh, the right of access to you know i mean to pay money for the right i mean to exercise our constitution right no matter what constitution right is it is, you know, you can't be charged a fee, period. So, okay. yeah. Uh, you, you, you made a record on that point. Like I said, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a process for it right now that exists. If you want to challenge the processes, you'd have to, you know, to do that otherwise. But so, again, your next court date will be uh, September the 14th. And uh, we're all set for today, Mr. Martin. You have a good day. Uh, Thank you for coming in today. Uh, yeah, you too. Yep. Bye. Well, well, now there you have it. Uh, one numb skull trying to outwit a uh, actual judge who could probably easily look these laws up, but probably doesn't have the, exactly have the time to do so. Oh, oh well. I mean, the judge would just uh, thrash him legally anyway if he actually saw the uh, what he was talking about. So, at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.